the nation is facing at our southern border. And this has been a crisis that's been brewing for months. It's not an overnight uh, problem, uh, but it is an executive order created problem when President Biden on day one got rid of some policies that were working incredibly well. And every Border Patrol agent uh, that I've talked to, and I was on the border last week, Thursday and Friday in McCallum, Texas, went to Donna, Texas at the Donna Processing Facility. Every border agent says the same thing. They said, getting rid of the Remain in Mexico policy, that one action alone opened up the floodgates to a surge. Thousands of people a day crossing our border are illegal. Then you couple that uh, with the deterioration of the Northern Triangle Agreements, where, you know, and, and yes, it was President Trump who negotiated those agreements with Mexico, with Honduras, with El Salvador, with Guatemala, and maybe if President Biden just doesn't like the fact that President Trump did something that was working well, why doesn't he renegotiate those agreements and call them his own, but they were working? And now today, it's so out of control that we have, for example, at the Donna Processing Facility, facility designed for about 250 person capacity. When I was visiting that facility last Friday, it was over 4,000 people. Young kids primarily crammed into that facility in those holding cells like sardines. In fact, yesterday we had a committee hearing with Dr. Fauci and CDC Director Walensky. And I asked them specifically about what's going on down at our southern border. Showed them some of the pictures that have been taken. And if you look at the CDC guidance that's out there on how we as American citizens have to conduct ourselves. If you own a restaurant, for example, whether it's in Baltimore, New Orleans, or anywhere else, if there's a capacity limit, and if that limit was 250 people, if there were 4,000 people in that restaurant, it would be shut down today. And I asked both Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky, would that facility be in violation of CDC guidance? And both of them said yes in testimony under oath. And then I talked to him about what's happening at our southern border, and I asked him, are these conditions in compliance with CDC guidance? Both Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky said, no, this is not. We talked about the Donna detention facility and the inhumane treatment of these young children by the Biden administration in that facility. And I asked Dr. Fauci, is that facility's conditions in which they're treating those young kids by the Biden administration in compliance with CDC guidance? And Dr. Fauci said, no. And Dr. Walensky, the CDC director, testified the same exact way that no, those are not in compliance. And in fact, as we know, they're coming across from Mexico. Do you know that the CDC guidance designates Mexico as the most dangerous nation right now, along with probably a few others, but they are the most dangerous in terms of COVID transmission. And so CDC guidance encourages American citizens not to go to Mexico, but they say if you do come back from Mexico, you are mandated by the CDC to show a COVID negative test before you as an American citizen can come back into the United States. Do you know that not one of these people are being tested for COVID when they come in illegally across the Rio Grande from Mexico? And then many of them are being put on airplanes without ID, being paid for free, most by the taxpayers, put on airplanes to fly off into cities all across the country. Border Patrol agents have told us at least 15% of these people that crossed illegally are COVID positive. And so I asked Dr. Walensky, and I asked Dr. Fauci, does that process by the Biden administration violate CDC guidance on travel from Mexico? And they both testified that yes, in fact, it does. That if they're getting on an airplane, they should be tested negative for COVID. None of them are, and in fact, some of them are known to be COVID positive, being put on airplanes, flying to cities all across this country. It's going on right now, that was going on Friday. About half the plane that I was on when I flew from McAllen back home had people with folders that said, I do not speak English, and it had a city on it. And it was multiple cities. But this is what the Biden administration is doing in violation of CDC guidance that you and I have to follow, that our, our constituents who are seeing their livelihoods crushed, their restaurants being closed down, many that won't open again forever, because they have to play by the rules that CDC and their states issue, and yet the Biden administration is exempting themselves from this. Now, we have legislation uh, I'd like to bring up to the majority leader that would fix this. And uh, my colleague, Ms. Miller-Meeks, requires a COVID test. 
before someone's released from CBC, C CBP custody. Ms. Harrell prohibits DHS from ceasing Title 42. Uh, there's a bipartisan bill by Mr. Katko and Mr. Quellar, which establishes an irregular migrant migration surge border response fund. Uh, I would like to ask the gentleman if he would bring those bills to the floor to address this crisis at the border. That's not only a humanitarian crisis, a national security crisis, but it's a Biden-created crisis that's violating the very CDC guidance, according to Dr. Fauci, that American citizens have to follow. And I would yield to the gentleman. We have a situation that is heart-wrenching and unacceptable. Uh, and it must be dealt with. In part, this situation comes because of the draconian policies of the previous administration. It comes also because uh, uh, Republicans have refused in both houses to come to agreement on a uh, comprehensive immigration reform bill. So we have chaos as a result because our immigration system as I believe almost every member of your side of the aisle and every member of my side of the aisle, uh, Madam Speaker, believes is broken. Uh, now, unfortunately, what we see in that picture uh, is broken systems uh, causing great danger, apprehension, and fear among many people who are fleeing to America for refuge. As, of course, uh, Lady Liberty at the head of the harbor at the Hudson River raises her torch and says that's what America is for. Now having said that, this situation is unacceptable. It's unacceptable for humanitarian reasons, it's unacceptable for the safety of not only those people that are in that picture, but for American citizens as well. Now it is my understanding, Madam Speaker, uh, that uh, CDC's existing pandemic public health order uh, for closed borders is in fact being followed. Uh, in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, New Mexico, California. Unaccompanied children across the border are tested, are tested by the Department of Health and Human Services. The migrants entering ICE facilities are tested and they are quarantined if they test positive. So uh, protections are trying to, to be affected, and this administration is working very hard uh, to ensure uh, the safety of uh, Americans and the safety of these children, many children uh, who have come across the border. Uh, none of them have been taken out of the arms of their parents. None of them have been made orphans by this administration. I didn't hear the uh, gentleman uh, lamenting the fact that we had hundreds of children who had been taken out of the arms of their parents and then they could not be found, that is their parents. They could not be reunited with their parents. This is a challenge. It's not a partisan challenge, it's a challenge for America. It's a challenge for us all. Uh, and this administration is working to try to come to a solution that is both humanitarian and effective. Uh, and uh, I'm hopeful that they will uh, proceed uh, in accomplishing that objective. And the gentleman mentions the policies of the Trump administration, which substantially underfunded its own policies of trying to help the Triangle countries. And when I say help the Triangle countries, uh, unfortunately, the leadership of those countries in too, too many instances is not trying to help itself. And so we see panicked people fleeing. I don't know how many members, and I, Madam Speaker, I don't know whether uh, uh, the gentleman uh, from Louisiana, my friend, uh, Mr. Scalise, saw the pictures of two children being dropped over the fence over the fence, by the way, that very large fence, billions of dollars of fence. Uh, smugglers dropped two children over the fence. That's how secure it was. Uh, and the tragedy of those children being dropped over that fence alone. 
I don't care where they're from or what, who they are, uh, but uh, my faith teaches me that uh, they may be strangers, but they are brothers and sisters. And in that context, uh, we need to come to grips, and I'm hopeful that the gentleman will support uh, the administration's desire to get a comprehensive immigration bill uh, adopted in this Congress. In 2013, the Senate passed, Madam Speaker, a bill which was supported by Democrats and Republicans, 14 Republican members of the United States Senate, Senate here, and we pleaded with the Republican leadership to bring that bill to the floor. Now, they will say they brought a bill to the floor. They did draw a bill to the floor, and almost nobody thought it was effective in accomplishing uh, the objective of having an immigration system that would work. Uh, so I tell the gentleman, the pictures that he is displaying uh, ought to concern us all deeply. And we ought to urge uh, all of us to cooperate and work towards making sure that we don't have scenes like that and that we have uh, the ability to deal with it, uh, this surge at the border in a humane way. But uh, no one in the previous administration can wash their hands of the responsibility of creating a situation uh, which, yes, the gentleman says Mexico is, is judged to be one of the most dangerous nations uh, on earth for COVID-19. And the previous administration said to people trying to seek solace and health and safety, stay, stay in the most dangerous nation on earth from COVID-19. I don't know whether that's a very humane policy. That's not a sanctuary for people who are in dire straits. We, we said no to some people who came here uh, from Germany. We said, no, you can't come in. And many of them returned in the 30s and early 40s and were slaughtered. They came here for sanctuary and found none. That doesn't mean we can take everybody, but it does mean that we need to deal with it in a humanitarian way, in a way that honors our values and honors uh, these people as our fellow human beings. So I tell the gentleman in conclusion that uh, these are sad scenes and we need to respond uh, to them in a humanitarian way, but also a smart way. And we need to re respond as well to the cause as well as the effect. And I yield back. I thank the gentleman. As we talk about asylum, let's be clear. America has laws for how someone can seek asylum. I, don't, I haven't seen anybody suggest that those laws just be repealed and you just take somebody's word if they say they want to come to America to seek asylum, come in today and jump ahead of everyone else. Well, the Look, gentleman America, for, and, and I'll, and well, the I'll gentleman give the gentleman just for one question on the asylum yes, issue. Sure. Does the gentleman believe we ought to obey America's laws on asylum? I think we ought to obey America's laws on immigration across the board. And if you look at the <laughs> asylum laws, there is a process to seek asylum. And in fact, every year people are granted that asylum if they prove their case. And that's where the law comes into play, which is being ignored right here. So what President Trump did when there was a surge in 2019, he confronted it, as a leader should do. He talked to people on the ground, he talked to our Border Patrol agents, who are the ones who have to deal with this crisis on a daily basis. In fact, 40% of our Border Patrol agents tonight at midnight, like Thursday night at midnight last week, where I was with those Border Patrol agents, 40% of them were pulled off of guarding our border where their primary mission is to stop drug cartels from smuggling fentanyl, cocaine, heroin into our country, which they're doing now at much higher levels, killing Americans all across the country. 40% of them pulled away because they're going to be changing diapers in this Donna detention facility tonight because that's what they're being tasked to do by the Biden administration. That's not their job. It's not why they signed up. Their morale is incredibly low. And well over roughly 90% of people who say they're coming here to seek asylum 
those cases are rejected by the courts. Rejected. And in fact, it's kind of hard to make an asylum claim when the parents of many of these kids you're seeing here paid thousands of dollars to the drug cartels to smuggle their kids and themselves into the United States. Hard to claim economic asylum, which is the case many of them plead, when you paid $4,000 to try to come here illegally when there's a legal process to come here. Not just the normal legal process where you can wait to come into America legally, where we let a million people into our country every year, the most generous nation in the world, America. But when they go around that system, that's where it overwhelms our system. And that's what's going on right now. President Trump confronted it, not by saying no one can come in, but by saying, you have to follow our laws if you want to come here. If you want to seek asylum, you've got to request it like everyone else. And they allowed them to even come through South and Central American countries, but stay in Mexico. And Mexico actually agreed with this. And there was an orderly system. And you got to hear your claim in a very expedient way. Today, they're given a piece of paper when they come across the border illegally, saying, come show up maybe five years from now. Good luck with that. And then they're given a plane ticket, a free plane ticket without an ID, to be sent off to some other state. I saw manila envelopes. Once, once you got below the I do not speak English, it said Dallas was on one. Philadelphia was on one. New Jersey was on one. I don't know what's going to happen to them when they land in New Jersey. If they can't speak English, if these kids, or what school system are they going to be placed in? Who's, who's then going to be responsible for this breakdown at our southern border, which was created by President Biden, which he could fix today? I've urged President Biden to go down to the border and see this for himself, to see how inhumane he's treating kids in violation of his own CDC guidance, which Dr. Fauci yesterday verified. That's, if you read the child abuse and neglect laws of the state of Texas, where this facility is, this is a violation of the child abuse and neglect laws at the President Biden-run facility. And again, President Trump went and negotiated with Mexico, went and negotiated with those Northern Triangle countries to resolve the surge. This could be resolved as well, and you don't need to reinvent the wheel because there was a method for how to resolve it legally, using the legal system that America has. Sure, I would agree it needs reforms, not an amnesty reform, where you send a magnet not only across South and Central America, but around the world that America's borders are open, because that's the message today. As the gentleman knows, there are at least six people on the terrorist watch list that have come across America's southern border. And I'm not talking about from South and Central American countries, from Middle Eastern countries, from Eastern European countries. Those are just the ones we know of that we've caught. And the Biden administration won't share that data with the media. The Biden administration won't even let the press into this facility, which is a national disgrace. I could imagine what the press would have said if the Trump administration was housing kids in a 33-person facility. There's over 400 crammed into a 33-person cell in the middle of a pandemic. And again, Dr. Fauci said this violates every protocol there is when we're trying to get our economy reopened. Other countries have to control COVID too, but in America, we're trying to control it. But here's where the double standard and hypocrisy is driving people nuts. If any American citizen ran their business in America like this, they'd be shut down by the federal government today. But yet people can come here illegally and the Biden administration is running this facility in violation of those very same guidances. And you know what happens to them? They were given a free airplane ticket, put on an airplane, possibly with COVID, and sent into some interior country of America, and we don't even know where they're going. The Biden administration won't share that. We've asked for a meeting, by the way. Our leadership team, Leader McCarthy, myself, have asked for a meeting with President Biden to talk about this crisis, and he refuses to meet with us about it. Just ignoring a problem will not make it go away. If we're going to find a solution to this, and again, I listed a number of bills, including some that are bipartisan, that would start solving this problem, but President Biden doesn't even want to go down. He put Vice President Harris in charge of this mess, and she won't even go down to the border. Maybe because she doesn't want to be associated with President Biden's debacle. But she was put in charge of it. She is the Vice President of the United States. She has a responsibility to go down there. She should have gone down there weeks ago, but she still hasn't been. And maybe if they saw that, if they looked into the eyes of these young kids, one of the first girls we ran into might have been a 10-year-old girl in one of these cells, and she was crying. And we asked her, why are you crying? And she said, I don't want to be here. She's an orphan. 
The gentleman talked about orphans. All of these kids, there are no parents with them. They don't want to be here. Many were crying because they're jammed into these cells for 20 hours a day, at least 15% with COVID, six inches apart, not six feet apart. That's what the Biden administration is doing right now. President Trump fixed this problem. And again, if President Biden just doesn't like President Trump, call it his own name. We don't care. The template, if he doesn't want to do what actually worked, then do something else that works. But just doing this, it's not only a national disgrace. Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky yesterday said it's a violation of the CDC protocols that every American taxpayer has to follow, and they don't. Exempting themselves from a problem, but making everybody else comply with it is no way to instill confidence in the American people. And I hope the president goes down there. I hope the president resolves this issue. He should meet with us. He said he wanted to unify the country. He said he wanted to work with everybody. It's time he start following through on those promises. And I would yield. Donald Trump didn't fix the problem. He delayed the problem. That's what happened. That's what, that's what those pictures reflect. He didn't fix the problem. He would say to those kids, get out of here. Go back to Mexico. Maybe you have a parent there. Maybe you have somebody who will take care of you. Uh, but get out of here. That was one way to, quote, solve the problem, I presume. Uh, but those kids didn't go away. The fear that they have for being home didn't go away. Now, I have said... Madam Speaker, this is something that we all need to deal with. From a compassionate standpoint, and from a legal standpoint, and from a human standpoint, which I guess is redundant to compassionate. But the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, President Trump did not solve this problem. He simply delayed it. And when he left, the pressure was so great because they did not believe that this president would simply throw them to the wolves, take them from their parents, uh, treat them as uh, refuse. So we need to deal with this, and hopefully we will. Hopefully we'll get comprehensive immigration reform. I would say again that uh, uh, one of the reasons that we have uh, the problem of not adjudicating these people quickly is because we don't have enough judges. And the reason we don't have enough judges, which were included both in the 2013 bill and subsequent reform bills, is because we haven't passed bills to provide the judges. Uh, on the theory that if you don't provide the judges, you won't be able to approve asylum and people won't be able to get in. Uh, I, I'm, Madam Speaker, at the end of this circuitous argument, and I yield back. Well, thank the gentleman for yielding. These are children being thrown to the wolves, and it's not President Trump who's doing it.